college basketball March Madness is back and we're going to do some sports betting, baby. Let's get it. For the people that don't know what March Madness is, it's a 64-team single elimination tournament to crown one champion. Over $8 billion is wagered during this tournament and I wanted some of the action. Okay, I got my two betting tickets right here. Before I tell you who I bet on, what my picks are, I first want to explain to you what my betting system is for the first round of March Madness. I've been doing this for six years. It's worked out every single time, and I'm going to roll with it again. And that is betting on the best team, the number one seed, versus the worst team in the tournament, which is the 16th seed. I like to bet on against the spread. I like to bet for the winning team. So I'm betting for the first game. Let me see. I am betting on Illinois versus Dextral, minus 22. And that's the thing about when you bet on the best team versus the worst team. These The first round is going to be minus 22, minus 30 points. Now I bet 200 pesos to win 386. Now if I lose this, what my betting strategy is, is I double up on the next game. I keep doubling up, baby, until I win. I got four chances at this. There are four games of the number one seed versus the 16th seed. So if I lose this one, I double up. I bet 400 pesos. If I lose that one, I bet 800. If I lose that, I go all out and I drop 1,600 pesos on the last game. It's never failed me. The most games I've ever lost is two games. So, so far I'm winning. I can't complain. Every other year I've won. So we're gonna keep rolling with it. The other game I got going on is uh, where is this one? Purdue and Villanova. These are usually really good teams, and I took this one as a parlay. I usually do not do parlays. I never do them. I always bet games straight up. Um, but this one, Purdue and Villanova, I like the payouts. They're playing really crappy teams, in my opinion. And I bet 300 pesos to win 527. All right? Now, what I noticed, what's different about the casinos here in Mexico versus the casinos, like, either online or in las vegas or wherever casino that you're located is in mexico they have a win tax which is ridiculous on top of the spread and the juice that they already make off of you placing the bet so normally if it's a dead even tie between the two teams the house will take a commission of like 10 percent, five to ten percent they already do that on the betting slip but now if you win they take an extra seven percent as a win tax, which is just ridiculous. So the house's edge on something that's 50-50 potentially, if you were to flip a, a quarter, heads or tails, the house will take five to 10%. Here in Mexico, they always take 10%. But then if you win on that, they take an extra 7%. So the house's edge is like 17% no matter what, which is ridiculous. You can't do this long-term if you're here at in the Mexican casino. But I'm just doing this for March Madness. Those are the two plays. Purdue and Villanova on one betting slip, and then the double up method, baby, on the number one seed versus the 16th seed betting on the spread. So this one is minus 22. I think the second game is Baylor versus Hartford. No idea about that one. I think that spreads minus 25 or something like that. Um, Gonzaga is the last game, that's tomorrow. Um, and yeah, hey, we're not worried about those games because we're gonna win this one right now because Right now, it is three, four minutes left in the, four, in the first quarter, or in the first half, I should say, <clears throat> and they are winning 27 to 17. So not really worried about that one. They, hopefully, they will pull through. If not, go back to the casino, drop another 400. All right, that's the plan just for the first round, and then we go back to the regular strategy. All right, guys, let's get this win. Illinois absolutely dominated this entire game, covering the entire game by about 25, 27 points. If there's one thing I want you guys to take away from this is every March Madness, take that first round bet that I recommended. Now, as for the Purdue versus North Texas, Purdue absolutely was horrible. They ended up going overtime and they didn't score a single point until two minutes left in overtime and they just got absolutely outplayed. So I felt pretty confident in my next play in Villanova. So what I did is I doubled down on Villanova as they took uh, Winthorpe which they absolutely demolished them. And I recovered those gains and we came out positive for the day. For the second round of March Madness, the first bet that I wanted to take was Syracuse versus West Virginia. 
The over-under on this game was a total of 148, and I took the under. So I need the total score combined being under 148. The first half was a complete under show, and then the second half, they were blowing over. It came down to these last two free throws. I need him to miss at least one. He got the first bucket. The total's at 147 now. I need him to miss. And just like that, he misses, baby. Woo! I was so pumped to see him miss that shot. I was celebrating, too, just with like those guys. For the other game that I took now, I took Michigan versus LSU. I'm just a big fan of Michigan. These guys always go deep in the tournament. And I thought, you know what? Michigan should easily have this game. And they really did. It was a very close game this entire time, but it was a great game to watch. They ended up pulling away in the second half. So big win for me on that one. Okay, we're back at it. Sweet 16 is here. We are doing fantastic so far in the March Madness betting. Want to give you guys a little update. We are doing really well so far in the tournament. Uh, like I said, we're going down to the Sweet 16. I really only have one game that I want to play, <clears throat> um, or maybe two. That is a parlay, Villanova and Baylor. I think Baylor's just going to crush them. And then I'm going to pick Arkansas and Oral Roberts. It's like a 15 seed versus a three seed. I'm uh, just going to two team parlay it. It's not a bad payout. Uh, I think that's the only bet I'm going to go from here. But hey, I want to show you guys how I'm kind of coming up with these bets um, when it comes to like baseball or anything like that or NFL. A cool little website that some of you may not know <clears throat> is called Team Rankings. If you guys do little sports betting, this is a cool website that will tell you all the trends. So I don't know. Let's pick baseball. I like baseball. So if you go to teamrankings.com, you go to baseball, uh, there's something here on the left side that you can go to trends, team trends. I'm all about betting kind of with the trending markets, uh, what teams are doing really well. And you can pick win loss, run line, over under, and it will tell you who is doing the best and who is doing the worst. But what's cool about this is you can change the situation from like, okay, well, let's pick the over under. Let's see, LA Angels was 60% in all the games of 2020. But if you wanna to go to maybe situation and go as home favorite, it will tell you who is doing extremely well while they are the favorite at home. And so as you can see, San Francisco Giants, 69%, um, which is pretty good. But you can also go check out the worst, which is like Minnesota, uh, they lose, they're under 73% of the time. So you could kind of match these up and see uh, the situational trends. If Minnesota is away, well, you should probably be betting the under, right? And what's also cool about this is if you go to matchups, you can go check out maybe Baltimore versus Boston. You can see, hey, how have these guys done head to head? So you can go head to head and you could see all their previous history. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, so, you know, Nothing too crazy. They seem to go back and forth. Baltimore, Boston, Boston, Baltimore, Baltimore. And it will tell you the over under. Let's see if we can get a better result on this one. Let's pick, uh, I don't know, Pittsburgh versus Cubs. Head to head. Um, so Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh has been doing pretty well. But over the last like seven times they've played, they've all been going under. So it's kind of cool. You can use a little bit of both. You can see, hey, these guys are playing each other. Minnesota is hitting a lot of unders. So, hey, maybe they're a good time to be hitting the unders right now. So that's a cool little website that I do like to use sometimes. But when it comes to March Madness betting, I'm kind of going with my previous history of watching March Madness and knowing who are the best teams and who are the worst teams. Um, and yeah, but hey, we're into the Sweet 16. I am pumped, ready to go. I wanna show you guys a quick little room tour of this place. I am staying in the Malacone Suites. This is $35 a night, full kitchen, Nice bathroom, TV, oh, not TV, shower. Huh. Let's check it out. There's the work setup. Got a TV right there so we can watch the games. Nice bed. $35 a night, can't complain. It's right on the Malacon. Got the casino right below me, so it's easy for me to go and place bets. Nice street. Got a gym right there. Hey. What a beautiful place. Can't complain about that. But hey, let's get into the Sweet 16. We're not done yet. We're going to go make some money. I think we're up like two, 300 pesos. I'm not sure. We're going to do the total at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't done it already, like, comment, subscribe. 
I appreciate it. All right, let's get into it, guys. Cheers. So for the Sweet 16, we got a couple bets here. One parlay, we got Arkansas and Baylor, but then we also took Gonzaga on a separate bet. Just a big fan of Gonzaga overall. These guys haven't lost a game in over a year and a half, and so they were just the heavy favorites. They got the job done, absolutely squashed USC as usual. For the two-team parlay that I took, it was Baylor versus Villanova. I wanted Baylor to win, and then I took Arkansas versus Oral Roberts. Now, I just kind of took the favorites on this one. Um, Baylor is just the number one seed. Everybody has in favor to win it. Actually, they're second behind Gonzaga. Um, Villanova hanged in there for most of the game, but overall, Baylor took it at the end of the game. As for Arkansas, this game was not a fun game to watch. It was an absolute dogfight this entire game, back and forth, back and forth. And in fact, Oral Roberts had him for a large part of the game. Until it came down to the final seconds, and Arkansas finally pulled through, as you're about to see this. 77, five seconds left on the clock. Nothing better than hitting a last-second free throw. These guys had two seconds left, going for the home run shot for the half court. One second left, misses. So, good job on that one. All right, let me give you guys a little update on the bracket. We started with 64 teams in this March Madness tournament. We are down to the final four. We got Gonzaga versus UCLA, and then the other game is Baylor versus Houston. The winner of these two games will go head-to-head -head in the championship, and I will be watching that game at the Rio All-Inclusive. Right now, I'm at a different hotel. Give you guys a little room tour. So I gotta go put some money on that game, put some money on them for to outright win the championship. So while I'm down there, I'm gonna do some, uh, I'll show you guys how I place a bet down there. And I'll uh, show you guys a little around the casino, do some gambling, hopefully win some money, play some slots, roulette, blackjack, give you guys a little tour of the casino here in Puerto Vallarta, right on the Malacan. Like I said, I'm going to watch uh, the game in the Rio. So I will update you guys once I'm there and give you guys a little tour of the whole place. So I will see you guys at the Rio. Let's get it, baby. Lock up that D, baby. Lock it up. Yes. Oof. Fuck. Three seconds left. Three, two. From way downtown. Ah! Let's go. Let's go. Three point three seconds left. Drains it from way downtown. That's how you make a play. That is how you make a play. Woo! And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to the championship. If you did not happen to watch that game, I strongly recommend it. Uh, watch the highlights. There was zero defense. It was nothing but, but buckets the entire game. Great finish to an overtime with the buzzer beater with the Gonzaga Bulldogs going to the championship. But hey, I am at the Ryu Varta right now and I am just checking out, been here for the last four nights and I wanna give you guys a little room tour, show you guys a little around the resorts and we'll go from there. So quickly check out the main part of the room. We got the sofa, got a nice TV over there. Great stay here, nice big bed. Show you a little bit of the bathroom, awesome bathroom. Nice toilet, you know, especially at the buffet. They offer all different kinds of food like Italian, French food, uh, the Asian, the Mexican, the American. So when you start combining all those different types of food, it's very important that you do have a very good bathroom, which they do have here. So that's good. Uh, we do have a little mini fridge here. I have drinking all the beer, so that is a problem. 
Um, so I need that to be restocked. This is where they used to keep all the bottles of the hard alcohol, like Bacardi, tequila, and a couple other ones. Um, but during the COVID right now, they have taken those all away, um, which doesn't make really any sense to me. You got some coffee. Yeah, let's have a look at the view. And actually, it's like they knew I was betting on Gonzaga. They wanted to wish me congratulations and good luck in the championship. They gave me a nice little bottle of champagne. Or they knew that I was coming. And they're like, hey, give this guy uh, a nice bottle. He might do a video for us. Um, and yeah, that was it. I actually was curious to see how much it was. And it's about a $12 bottle of champagne. So I'm not going to lie. Not bad. Got a nice view. Got all the rooms. And there's the beach. We got the two pool bars down there. So that's where they usually do the shows down there. Um, last night was karaoke night. The night before that was Michael Jackson. You got the buffet down there. They got all different kinds of food. And then you got the, uh, the French restaurant, the Asian, the steakhouse, the Mexican restaurant. And I bring you over to the pools over there. Um, great time. Everybody goes to the pool bar. Um, and drinks, hangs out there, listens to music. Then you have a fantastic beach. Can't complain with this place. Had an absolutely amazing time here at the Rio Barreta. But it is championship night. Gonzaga is taking on Baylor. The Baylor Bears uh, going to be an exciting one. I got to check out of here. I'm going to spend the remainder of the day here. And then I'm going to jump on a taxi and then go back down to uh, the Malacan area. Watch the game. And uh, I will keep you guys updated. This is the last game. We are up money for the whole March Madness tournament. Um, hopefully they pull through, win this championship, and we are making money from the casino. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I'm having a blast making this. All right, let's get it. For the championship game, Baylor came out and took the lead instantly by 10 points, and Gonzaga never even came close. To be honest, I don't know what happened to their defense over the last two games, but... Baylor ended up taking it. To be honest, I was a little disappointed in Baylor's celebration here. Uh, you guys just won the championship. You think a little bit more excitement. But, hey, congratulations to Baylor Bears. They ended up pulling through. Now, overall for March Madness, I came out positive 500 paces. But Gonzaga ended up losing on that final game. So I put half my winnings on Gonzaga to win it. They ended up losing, so I walked away with 250 pesos. What I ended up spending my money on is I got a very nice spot on the beach, had a red snapper, had some mussels, and I enjoyed a couple beers. I had a great time of sports betting. Also, at that casino, I absolutely killed it that night. I took them for, I think, 2,500 pesos. I walked in there with 500, turned it into 2,500, so I had a great time at the casino playing blackjack, roulette, slots, did amazing. I just kept winning and winning. But hey, that's the end of the video, guys. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to know how I'm traveling and trading around the world right now, check out my YouTube channel. Feel free to hit me up on social media. Have a great time, everybody. Comment, like, subscribe. Cheers.